you're always going to see this. It's basically going to try to automatically adjust the resolution of your monitor, of your screen, um, for your specific computer. Um, now, when I hit OK here, it's going to automatically adjust, and I've never had a problem with this. But if there ever is a problem and all of a sudden your screen turns off or you get some weird colors or any other issues with your screen or your display, there's a countdown here. And when this counts down to zero, it's going to reset the settings to what it just was before it said it's going to do that. I'm going to hit OK here to accept the new settings. And we have a little bit better resolution to work with here. And this process, all of the, the whole install, may be faster or slower on your computer. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of just waiting around. Some of that time, they give you some stuff to read, um, some progress, a uh, countdown in time. Um, but sometimes you just got to sit and wait, and that's the same with installing anything. <clears throat> sometimes it's instantaneous. On a faster computer, it's going to be faster. On a different computer, it may be slower. So. Um, it's all different, so don't worry if it's taking a different amount of time. Now, if it's taking hours, then you have something something wrong going on with your computer. So we're going to come to this uh, little intro video here. You can hit Escape to skip it, which I just did, and that skipped the little intro animation there. And we're going to come to the initial screen here. There's a little sound effect playing in the background you might be able to hear. And uh, there's some help here, but I'm going to walk you through each step. If you need help, you can click on this little uh, this little uh, question mark right here. But I'm just going to go ahead and hit Next. And right here, it's going to ask if you want to turn on automatic updates or um, not right now. Basically, leave it off. Um, I highly suggest that you do turn on automatic updates. Absolutely, you do want to have your operating system updates regardless of what the operating system is. Um, if you select not right now, you can always turn them on later. So um, don't worry about that. Even if you do accidentally press this during this process, you can, um, you can turn them on later. And I'll show you exactly how to do that once we get to the desktop. Going to hit next here. And I'm going to skip. And always just press, press skip here unless you have uh, you want it to automatically detect your internet connection but honestly it always makes you ask and everything it always will just work if you have a normal connection from a normal internet service provider just hit skip at this step it's going to ask if you want to register with Microsoft your copy of Windows um, right now I really don't need to do that for this video but you can actually do that yourself and you just select yes here instead of no Hit next here, and it's going to ask you to set up a initial user account. It will require one. Um, there will be a hidden account called administrator on the computer, but you need to create another account as well, too. Um, so right now, we're just going to create our main account. Um, we'll just call it PC Frame. Hit next, and you can create multiple accounts. We're done here. Um, depending on the type of Windows that you may have, it may ask you to activate Windows. Um, there's specific instructions on the activation window on how to activate Windows. If you have an internet connection, you can pretty much just automatically do it. If you do not have an internet connection, you can call an 800 number given on that screen um, that would be here and it will um, essentially just completely activate you automatically. It'll give you a code to enter um, in your telephone, literally, and it will uh, read you back a code that you enter into the computer um, on that screen, and it will activate Windows for you, assuming you have a licensed, valid license key. And now we're going to go to the desktop. It's going to log into that user account that we just created. The first time it does this, it might take a little bit longer because it needs to set up the whole user account. 
Okay, and we are into Windows. Looks familiar, doesn't it? Now this has gone from a clean installation right to the desktop, so you can see what we just installed. We just installed Windows. So remember how I was going to tell you about the automatic updates if you had selected no? What you can do, you actually automatically get it as long as you have Service Pack 2 version of Windows or above, which most people do. There's the security center here, and it's already giving me a warning down here in the lower right corner. This red shield. If I double click that, that'll open up the security center. And it's saying that I don't have antivirus installed on my computer. That's because I just installed Windows. I have no programs installed on the computer at all, besides the ones that come with Windows. Um, but right here, automatic updates, it's saying they're on because I selected on before. If I come down here, it gives you a little bit of information right there. And down here, you can change the automatic update settings. You can do this from the normal control panel and also right here from the security center, which you can also reach from the control panel. But since it's giving us this notification down here in the lower right corner, if that's bugging you and you don't want it to bug you about that, just want to let you know as a quick tip for first installing Windows, over here in the security center, this link right here, click on this, and you can choose which section, these are the sections, firewall, automatic updates, and virus protection, which of those you want it to warn you about. So since virus protection is the one that it's red flagging, I'll uncheck that and hit OK and check it out. The icon's gone. I'm going to close the security center for now. A couple more things I want to show you. When you first install Windows, Windows 7 is a little bit different than this and so is Windows Vista, but Windows XP really has a limited set of what are called device drivers. Drivers are what allow the different parts of your computer to interact with Windows pro properly. So for example, the video card in your computer, or even the processor, the, the memory even honestly, to the keyboard, the screen, everything has a driver associated with it. Now as you can see here, the display driver, what gives you what you can see, is working because we can see what the computer is running. But you may have um, an updated driver to that video driver or maybe the sound doesn't work right away. You need to install the sound drivers for your computer. Or maybe even the internet doesn't work because you don't have the driver for your network card to get you on the internet. So what you're going to need to do is get the drivers for your computer, for your specific hardware in your computer. Now where you're going to find that is on the specific manufacturer website of your computer. If your computer was not built by a manufacturer and it was built at home, then you're going to need to get the drivers manually from each specific hardware um, company or perhaps the motherboard may have a disk with a lot of drivers on it and you can also find them around the internet. And for PC Brain, my name is Matt. I want to thank you for tuning in. Till next time.